Gang, I'm back with another video for you today. I'm going to talk to you about the latest release from the house of Marc Antoine Barbois. It's Encelade, this one right here. So I'm going to review the fragrance for you guys and also cut to a video I shot of Marc Antoine Barbois discussing the latest fragrance and a lot of more information about the brand. So find out about Encelade coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today we're talking about Encelade from the house of Marc Antoine Barbois. You know what? I've been wearing this fragrance, uh, as you can see here. I've been enjoying it, and the thing is, uh, I got some great reactions from a few folks as well. They're definitely experienced perfume people. One of them was a sales associate at a Dior boutique who commented about the fragrance. And then also a perfumer I had also met who also said some positive things about Encelade. And for me, it's a, a smoky, leathery, vetiver experience. So that's all I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna to cut to uh, the video with Marc Antoine Barrois. It's a very detailed video. And then once he's done, I'm gonna tell you about the fragrance as well. So stick around to find out all about it for me, in addition to Marc Antoine Barrois. So Hansolat came about six years after our first perfume, B603, that many of you might know. Um, we initially started making beautiful perfume, trying to just create a beautiful perfume and, uh, and not being inspired just by our souvenirs of what beautiful perfumes were and not trying to make something conceptual or anything and we create B683 as a, a generous, um, woody, leathery, spicy fragrance but mostly a beautiful classical perfume. Um, out of it we made an extra that is like super carnal and everything and uh, it's, uh, it goes with wood, natural wood, with green apple. It's very, very uh, round and, and, and carnal. Then we made Ganymede. Ganymede was, is still our best seller for the moment. It's really uh, the fresh mineral leather uh, that we brought with something like very naive and very innocent type of, uh, of, of, um, of imagination. We, we did that in, 2020, in 2019. And after that, we wanted to bring something different. We really wanted to, uh, with uh, perfumer Quentin Biche, who is working with me on all of my fragrances, we wanted to create something that brings something very green, something very, uh, like I'm very close to nature. We are both very close to nature and we wanted to share something very green. Then COVID came and, uh, and we thought, well, this cannot be something green and dry and things like that. We need to do something green, but we because we still want it. But we want to do something very joyful, very generous, and uh, and we created Unslad based on the fact that we wanted it to be green, but we did not know where to go. We just wanted to create something beautiful and joyful behind that. Um, we still have the little leathery signature in the perfume, but we added to it. Content was a genius bringing this to this perfume, like some uh, an overdose of rhubarb at the beginning of the fragrance. Uh, so Encelade, the, the name of the new fragrance is Encelade. Um, and I will pop it to you. So, so Encelade, it starts with this overdose of rhubarb and then very quickly goes on a vetiver, but like smooth vetiver, not very, not too, uh, um, like brings this very impression of woody luxury fragrance. Uh, then it goes into uh, cedar, it goes into uh, sandalwood, like a beautiful cedar, sandalwood from Australia. And it adds with the little tonka bean, a little bit of it uh, to make something very, um, that evolves a little bit and, uh, and so on. It's really, um, I like to say, it's not all about the ingredients. It's all about being a beautiful fragrance, all about being a fragrance that um, brings like it's an explosion of joy, it's an explosion of something uh, very mm, emotional, um, very sensual and, uh, and this is the, the poorness of this perfume, sensual and powerful, it's like just incredible. We have like so many beautiful feedbacks now, it was lots of a very big challenge after Ganymede to create this new fragrance but we are very very proud of it, it's really really good. The name of Encelade comes from the Greek mythology where Encelade is a giant and it's buried in, under the Etna, the Mount Etna, the, the volcano. And it's really this idea of making a lush jungle 
on the slow, on the side of a, of a volcano, something very explosive but very green, very I, I'd say very ecological because this touched my heart and this is really what I what, what I'm into. But um, but indeed, it's something very uh, luxurious, very lush j uh, jungle on the slope of a volcano, something really deep deep into the ground. It's very long lasting. Like just incredible. As all of my perfume, I try to say that my perfumes are made for men or for women. But in a way in, of, of using it, the perfume you can leave in your bathroom and just you perf perfume in the morning and you have still in the evening, even on, on the pillow on the next day. So this is my fourth fragrance working with Quentin Biche. Um, we have also created two candles with Quentin. We really uh, the way we work together is really um, this creative osmosis there is between us the huge um, trust I have in him, the, the trust he has in, within me, uh, to be able to communicate with emotions and to, uh, we discuss together about what we feel is good for the moment, what we feel we want to do. Um, hopefully until now we felt really on the same, um, on the same page all the time. So it's really um, talking about what we want and then we don't know where we're going, but we are going and we are exchanging a lot, we are spelling uh, dozens and dozens, not to say hundreds of, uh, of lab samples to try to improve the thing and, uh, and until both of us are really fully satisfied we never stop a perfume. Uh, the story behind Ensolade is that it should have been ready much more earlier and uh, our commercial team were like, was like urging us to, um, to, to be ready with it and we were saying well at some point we need to be fully satisfied with it so we need to work more on it and we did more and more trials and so on until we really finish the, fin the final touch. It's not we know where we want to go and we are going. It's like just we are building the perfume stone by stone like we would build a piece of art. Thanks for watching that video. Now to tell you a little bit about this particular fragrance. So this is a 2022 launch. It's created by Quinton Biche. This is the fourth release from this house. So we had B683, we had Ganymede, we had an X-ray version of B683, and now we have Ensalade. The price is 100 ml for $210. I would call this a woody spicy fragrance, and it does feature notes of rhubarb, vetiver, Atlas cedar, tonka bean, Australian sandalwood. Now, if you recall, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is mostly a, a vetiver leather experience for me. And it's a darn I didn't have this with me to feature it in my top 20 vetiver fragrances video because that's basically what I get with this one. Definitely lots of vetiver with, le uh, with leather, as I said. It's a smoky uh, leather, but also a little bit animalic, very, very lightly, not overwhelmingly uh, animalic. But you definitely experience some kind of fruity vegetal experience up top when you first experience or when you first spray the fragrance. There's definitely a light fruitiness and some sweetness there as well. And I think the sweetness is perfect with this particular fragrance because we've got that kind of earthy woody vetiver here and also this kind of uh, leather note, which both of them tend to be kind of on the savory side. So uh, it's kind of a, a balancing act with the uh, rhubarb note in this particular fragrance, uh, which makes for a great experience. But for me, the rhubarb is definitely not the most intense experience. You definitely get it, but it doesn't last too long. I think it's just there to accentuate the fragrance, to add a nice contrast, which is kind of like that fruity, vegetal kind of an experience. So in addition to the vetiver, it does get very, very woody. There's definitely the presence of uh, the, the cedar note in here. And then there's a little bit of sweetness coming in, in addition to the rhubarb from that tonka bean note. I get that quite a bit here. So it adds a light sweetness, a little tobacco-ish touch, a little bit of nuttiness as well, because there's definitely a nutty experience in this particular fragrance. Not only do we get this bitter almondiness from the tonka bean note, but we also get a little bit of nuttiness from the vetiver as well. And it's not a very distinct nuttiness, but just kind of a nutty experience, which is kind of cool. It's not necessarily gourmandish to me, but uh, definitely uh, some kind of a nut, uh, a nondescript kind of a nuttiness, which adds a, a unique layer to the fragrance. It does eventually get to be a smooth, woody experience. There's definitely the, the presence of sandalwood in this particular fragrance as well, which I quite like, but definitely overly masculine. This is definitely a very masculine fragrance wearing experience. If you like the idea of vetiver with a little bit of an animalic, leathery experience, definitely recommended for this one. And I think this is a great fragrance uh, for a father. Like we were, I was doing that vetiver fragrances video, mentioning it would be great 
uh, a note for dads and things like that, uh, I think this would make for a great experience for dad as well. Like if you're looking for a new fragrance to gift dad, I think this would make a great gift for a father. If you have a father or if you are the dad yourself, it's a great smelling experience. Definitely a perfectly created, perfectly launching just now. Very, very classy experience. I, I like that whole uh, experience of the fruitiness from the rhubarb, the, the little vegetally kind of uh, experience. It's, it definitely has a pulpiness there with that rhubarb, but it's mostly about woods and it's mostly about vetiver with some sweetness thrown in with a few other notes. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be as uh, popular as uh, something like Ganymede. I think Ganymede is still my favorite fragrance from this house, but if you want a little bit of a change of pace from B683 or even Ganymede, I think Encelade will do the trick for you guys. So I hope you guys get to try it. Uh, there's a link in the info box to Lucky Scent. You can go there and check out the fragrance, uh, find out all about it in addition to what I'm giving you here today. But other than that, that's all I have for you. I do want to say one more thing about uh, the compliments that I received. Uh, I don't know what it is about this particular fragrance and I wasn't expecting those kind of reactions and uh, definitely uh, were positive reactions from, like I said, a few folks that I uh, came uh, across and uh, reacted uh, positively to this fragrance. So it does smell great on me. I do like the way it smells and I like that balance of leather and vetiver together. I think they complement wonderfully together. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Encelade. Have you guys uh, sampled Encelade yet from the house of Marc Antoine Barrois? Do let me know, put a comment down so I can find out. Also let me know what your favorite fragrance is from this house if you haven't or if you have sampled Encelade, I'd like to find out if you're familiar with this particular house and what your favorite fragrances are. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. Just after launching a fragrance, it's difficult to talk about the future in terms of fragrance. Of course, we do have projects in our drawers and we are continually working on new things. Um, and so that until uh, the beginning of this year has been taking all of our creative energy and we've been fully working on that. Uh, we know that people are waiting for an extra of Ganymede, so we are working on it. We're just not satisfied at the moment. So it's. Um, we need to improve it, we need to, to, to make it. We, our biggest fear, um, my biggest fear, and Quentin also shares this with me, um, is really to disappoint. I would really rather wait one more year and to have like people urging me and saying, well, you did not, you, you told us something would come next year and it doesn't come next year, but it comes a year after. Uh, because I need to do things that I'm proud of for everything I do. I need to have things that are really, like I was saying, what I consider my perfume being beautiful, exceptional, sincere and, and, and respectful perfume. It's all the sincerity is doing something that I believe into, is doing something that I really think is this exceptional fragrance uh, that I want to share, not sharing something just because it would like, be because the market is asking for it. I want just to make perfume that would still be there in 15 years, 20 years. It's really my aim into this. I don't need to do many perfumes for the moment. We have only four and it's not, um, we don't need to have more than that. We, we, we will do more, but we will do more when we are ready to do so. And also part of our other projects is also to bring you more experience and so, so on. So at the moment, we have this very new boutique from last year uh, in, in the center of Paris, um, near, nearby the Louvre. It's a really beautiful for boutique where I invite people to travel in our imagination because when people are asking us what are your perfume inspired by, it's every of our perfume is another planet, is another imaginary. Um, we travel on, in our imagination from a planet to another and here you are like in a cloud of something where we travel into our own imagination. So. This is the type of experience we want to give to our, to our clients too, to share with you. We are opening um, a, a new, like a corner in the department store Le Printemps that would be open by the time the video is on. And we are also opening by the end of the year in London another store. Uh, so there's going to be plenty of things to experience and in the future year we will do more and more.